Hello, welcome everyone to Get Connected with Julie Barkas and Michael Tassner. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's so nice to be here with you and it's good to see you as well, Michael. Definitely to you as yeah. well. You as well. Did you have a good weekend? I did. A um, little cooler in Buffalo, but finally got some yard work done and just uh, getting everything ready for summer. So the kids, uh, we've got a nice pool in the backyard. So kids were had to crank the heat up and kids were out there relaxing in the pool pretty much. Oh, well. nice. So. Nice. So it was kind of a rainy weekend here. And of course, I'm interested in hearing how it is for everybody. So if you're here tuning in, feel free to leave us a comment, participate with us. We do come back and read through your comments and love, love, love the interaction. We're here every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, but yeah, you know, here the weekend was a little rainy. So I don't know if it's wrong that I kind of took several naps. <laughs> <laughs> you're out there doing all your yard work and i'm napping but I, but in my mind i'm still working i'm creating visions and all that kind of stuff oh, there's <laughs> all these studies that show that naps are good for you and can definitely continue to help so now it's i take naps as well so. <laughs> yeah. i love naps you know it's, it's this amazing time now are you a workout guy um sadly no i haven't been lately so i gotta I got to get my my butt back on on track. Yeah. I, everyone keeps talking about this. Um, was it like the seventy five day mental? I don't know if you've seen that or whatever the mental tough challenge where it says to go on any kind of diet or eating regimen, exercise twice a day for forty five minutes. So it seems a little steep, but uh, <laughs> drink a gallon of water and read. I think it said ten or fifteen pages in in a kind of product not product anything relating to business or yeah in your life so to get into your mind yeah and today we'll be talking about productivity and i definitely think that working out and healthy body is part of it and getting enough water and i'm chugging like two or three of these a day um, but we'll be talking about productivity and how to really increase that and skyrocket it but uh, i was thinking about working out i'm a big total gym i'm not sure if you know what that is it's the, yeah yeah of course yeah, the yeah. Machine that christy brinkley and chuck norris promote but i'm part of even a total gym addicts group oh wow where these are these people who are just addicted to this machine and my mom just joined the group now too but uh, over the weekend, a new device that I wanted to try came in, and it's a vibrating platform. Have you heard of those? I have. I've never never seen one in action, <laughs> but I'm sure I've seen one of the infomercials or never seen yeah. it in person. I broke down and got one, you know, because it's supposed to like lubricate your joints and be oh, like, you know, five minutes of working out on this thing supposed to be like an hour. And literally my boyfriend, he's very big and muscular, got on this thing and he was doing a couple different things for like his abs. And it was like five minutes and he was like, he was sweating, oh, but wow. I've been going on this vibrating platform and, and I think it's pretty cool for like improving your balance. So it's kind of like one of my new new additions into my workout room. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah. It. So what about everybody listening? Do you have a favorite workout that you love to do? A favorite piece of equipment? Let us know. And if you interact with us on the show, I'm going to pick somebody. And I think I'm just going to do it randomly and award you a T-shirt. So I'm going to go through all the comments and give you one of our always essential T-shirts uh, for commenting or for sharing this show out. We are here and our vision with the show was to really help you uh, thrive beyond present circumstances. And to really, whether it's right now with the COVID that's going on or all the other craziness that's happening in our world, how do you really create a sustainable business and bring your big vision to life? And I am an advocate of it's a vision beyond present circumstances that will really propel you into action. So that's why the show is here. We're here to serve you and we would love your comments, love your shares. And uh, we're gonna talk today about productivity. Definitely. No, I mean, we, yeah. when we looked at kind of all the content that we've done so far, uh, obviously we want you to re-listen to as many of the episodes as you can because there's golden nuggets in all of them. Oh my gosh, there's items. so many golden nuggets. <laughs> um, so I definitely want you to do that. But what we realized and, and thought that would be helpful today is rather than simply giving you some more tactics that we thought we'd kind of give you some productivity tips of how do you take this stuff and not, I wouldn't even say life hack, but I mean, how can you optimize your life? And I know that uh, both Julie and I do a, a lot of interesting things when it comes to productivity. I'm sure that Julie teaches a lot of these things. I, I don't, I teach my team, but we, I tend to not, I guess, teach them outward, but um, we both kind of have some unique systems and ways and mindset tricks and, and yeah. all different kind of things that we thought would be helpful to share with you all today to, to basically allow you to kind of take what we're 
giving you and, and to implement it so that you're not constantly in overwhelm. Because I think, I don't know, Julie, if you hear that or even feel that, but I know that there's some days yeah. I just, I'm like feeling completely overwhelmed. And uh, once I kind of take a step back and go back to my routines and systems and processes to make sure that I'm focusing on the right things and kind of propelling that business, my mission, my vision forward, then I kind of get back in harmony. But if I'm not, if I'm not in that space, I, I just, I'm not a productive person at all. I just, I end up browsing TikTok or Snapchat or <laughs> Facebook or whatever, right. and then that just makes it even worse. So. Well, and I think that's the problem with us owners and a lot of people tuning into the show. You're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a childcare business owner. And even if you're not an owner, if you're a leader, you could still kind of get into it where we're thinking a lot. Our minds don't stop. And, and I don't know about uh, you. Well, actually, I do know about you because I've heard it for over 20 years. <laughs> It is that it's like, you know, it's midnight and you're still thinking about solutions to the challenges that you're facing in your childcare programs. And it's kind of the way that our mind works. So it's almost like intentionally learning to be able to close our minds down and to schedule time in for the thinking. And am I always good at this? No, because my mind, you know, it could look like I'm napping or I'm watching a TV show, but really I'm strategizing. <laughs> I'm creating Facebook posts. I'm creating ideas, different things that I want to talk about and share with the world. So, you know, it's like we have these minds that never stop. But the downside of that is if you have a mind that never stops and then you've got a team to manage and then you've got parents to deal with and you've got all the reading material coming in and all the licensing and all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, how do you stop your mind and just propel yourself into action? So we're going to talk about those things today. And if you've got questions, let us know. We'd love to answer and uh, to help you out. And, and performance and productivity was actually one of my earliest studies. Uh, when I was leaving corporate America many, many moons ago, um, I remember just having walls in my cubicle that were well insulated with paper. And it was something that I saw growing up. It was like we always had piles of stuff all around us. So in corporate America, it was no difference pile of papers all around me. And then I came across um, a company called Success Motivation Institute. And they had this fantastic planner and this fantastic training that I took. And I'm like, well, wait a second. How many hours is going towards TV? You know, how many hours does the average person spend watching TV or zoning out? And a lot of times we do that as a default because we don't know how to propel ourselves forward into our goals. So we just kind of close down and, and watch TV and that's easier. But I discovered this amazing planner that just changed my life. I don't use that planner anymore. But I loved it so much, I began teaching the strategies and became certified with the company on performance and productivity to really empower uh, executives, empower leaders, empower entrepreneurs to get back control of their time so they could experience the, the freedom and profitability and peace that they're really longing for. I like it. I like yeah. it. Uh, so let's let's dive in and, and let's. Uh, I'm excited. I didn't know you had that background, so that, that's exciting. So I think this yeah. will be a, a wonderful episode. Um, I think we'll, we'll kind of bounce with some different ideas, and I'll I'll throw an, uh, an idea or two out there. And yeah, um, most of the stuff, at least, um, I, I not even most. I think all the stuff that I have have learned has just kind of been learned from other people. So um, I, I am. I'm in no means an expert on productivity, but what I realized was if I didn't become more productive, that there's no way I could kind of go from where I am today to where I want to go to. Yeah. Uh, it was, there's a mentor of mine, Garrett White of Wake Up Warrior. He's like the, the person that you are today needs to die and you got to constantly be reinventing yourself each and every single day. And I just started to realize that there's no way I'm going to hit my goals. I mean, if, if I'm a simple example, and I know this is a lot of the people that are listening now, you wake up and, and it's you right into fire firefighter mode, which we've talked about in, in a previous episode. So okay. um, I'll share a couple things and then we'll, we'll kind of, again, bounce back and forth with some ideas and, and give our listeners some really great actions. So um, I'm a huge fan of a, a gentleman named Dan Sullivan, and uh, he owns a business called Strategic Coach. And what they did was they do days kind of uh, once a quarter. So you go in, you go to their office. So it's in-person days and they teach you one core strategy and it's done. So that, like there are some people that have been in it for 18 years. So he's constantly even maybe even longer. He's constantly inventing kind of new materials and new stuff. And one of the cornerstone things that I learned in year one was kind of the entrepreneurial time system as he calls it. 
And there are three different, this was, to me was, was quite revolutionary because when I started thinking about it, and I think a lot of you, as you're, you're listening, you're going to be like, wow, this is um, insane. So he has three different ways that he classifies days. So free days, focus days, and buffer. So free day is a day where you literally do absolutely no work. And when I say absolutely no work, that means you're not reading the newspaper. You're not doing anything that's going to potentially trigger your mind to think about work. So like, I, and I didn't think about it until I sat down and when he gave that definition. So I'm like, oh, my free days are weekends. Well, then when you really, it's, you're doing no emails, no text messages, or you're not checking. If you're checking Facebook, it's for social purposes, but it's really impossible to check Facebook for, I mean, just social purposes with mm -hmm. all the ads and everything else going on. It's a big black hole. <laughs> exactly. Especially lately. Yes. Um, so it was by his definition, I realized that I had not taken a free day in over 10 years. Oh, wow. Like even when I was on vacation with my family in Florida, I was still, I mean, had my phone. And I'm like, well, it's, it's harmless. But what I started to realize and when I really reflected and as he was teaching this, so, oh, and I just, sadly, I went back, I, I bounced back and forth between my old ways, but you, usually not. Um, so I was in Florida in February, right before all the COVID stuff hit and was in Disney World. And I'm like, oh, I got to check my emails before we're at Disney World for the day because I can't check things during the day or I got to save my battery. And then I finally stopped myself. I'm like, no, because then I'm going to literally be thinking about what emails I saw. Oh, geez, I got to worry about this fire. So the free days are what he deems the most important. And there's lots of studies that show that taking vacations, I mean, it is massively impactful for your productivity. But again, the big thing that he encourages is that you're taking vacations and they're legit vacations. They're, they're not, you're going down there to strategize for your next book or something like that. Um, so literally just kind of mine mind dumps of, of work stuff. So yeah. uh, the next days are buffer. And by his definition, uh, a buffer day is that they're kind of the random days. They're the random days where maybe you have a couple of meetings with your staff, for example, you're talking to vendors, you're doing payroll stuff. So like you're working on the, the business uh, things or stuff, so to speak. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's some rhyme to them and there's some reasoning behind them, but they're not the most productive of days, but they're necessary. Those are my Mondays. Yeah, so exactly. <laughs> so by his definition, I would say that pretty much every day that I've had prior to learning this was a buffer day. Um, so the last days are what he calls the focus days. And the focus days should be um, after the free days, kind of the, the second most important set of days. And those are the days where you're working on the things that are going to drive your center forward. Those, that's when you're working on hiring. That's when you're working on marketing, doing, improving your tours, planning a virtual tour, putting together webinars and content. And that's when you're doing all of those things that are going to actually move you forward. Um, he calls them uh, your unique abilities. So like, what are those things that are your unique abilities that you're able to do better than anyone else, for example? Um, so you set those days aside and to his point, none of these days can be meshed together. Mm. So you can't have a free day and a buffer day. You can't have, well, my first two hours was a focus day, but then all heck broke loose and now it's um, a, a buffer or something like that. Right. So, um, and he encourages you to really, I mean, plan these days out so that before you're waking up and even, I mean, a, a couple of days before the day, you are planning out the days that you're going to have. So, you know, like Julie, you said that Mondays are your buffer days. Let's do all the randomness. But then yeah. maybe Tuesday, you're working on producing new content. You're doing Facebook Lives. You're doing some of these other different things that are going to move you forward. So um, that was my first share. I For me, and there's a, a few other things that I'll share on this episode after we um, get some great content from you. But that was out of everything that I've learned so far. That yeah. has had the biggest impact on me because I just realized that almost every day was a buffer day and I was never legitimately taking free days. 
And as I have been working with childcare centers and looking at kind of how the owners structure their day, and it wasn't that it was intentional that I was doing that, uh -huh. but it was more just in passing because I would, I'm always hearing Michael, I, I don't have enough time. I don't have yeah. enough time. I, I just, yeah. I, so I'll say a simple example. Uh, hey, we could really use a video so that we could get that video on Facebook. We could drive in some more engagement, some more kind of brand loyalty to your center. Uh, when do you think you could get that? Whoa. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. We got to work on this and I got to do this and I got to do this. And um, and I'm not saying that that no one is busy. Everyone is busy, but it's, are you busy with the right things? Are you being intentional with the, the stuff you're working on? And is it really your unique ability? That was the other thing that was yeah. just uh, really, really interesting. So I'm going to take a breath and pause there and Ooh. kind of uh, bounce the the volleyball back over to you and, and let you throw some some stuff. But well, uh, and, and I think sure. and, yeah, thank you. And I think those are some great ideas too. And I love that because how many times do we you know think about taking a free day, but we don't really. You know, it's kind of like. Um, you know, I was out bike riding oh, it was a couple of weekends ago and I'm like, oh, okay, this is just going to be nice and relaxing. And then my phone was ringing and I answered it and I'm like, oh, wait a second. I shouldn't have picked that up because then it's an hour later after being on that call. So I think you really, really, really got to set some boundaries for yourself during that free day. But I love that approach. And I want to ask you, so do you implement this to this day? Is this how your day is run right now? Um, so I, I knew you were going to ask that. Um, <laughs> So I would say that I followed about 80% of the time. The, sadly, the only one, well, and it's the most important one, that I have not been following uh, the last couple of months has been the free days. Yeah. Uh, so it, I'm making an excuse, but um, I'm, my master's thesis is due on Monday. So oh, the only go. time that I've been able to work on it has been weekends. So um, what I have tried to do is kind of a compromise, I guess, is trying to wake up before the family wakes up on Saturday or Sunday and put in a couple of hours and then kind of shut down. Yeah. Um, but I would say that the, this device, it is still the thing that is, it's, it's great that we're all connected, but it's also the device that crushes our time. So yeah. um, I agree, you know, and I think Facebook too, and I actually, uh, you know, now we're doing, we do so much. Uh, we have so many conversations with our childcare owners on Facebook. Even John and my manager talks to people on Facebook. But once you get on there, it's like, oh, wait, and, and what's going on over here? And, and uh, you know, what what's happening here? So, you know, you just get so pulled into it. And I actually put a tool on my computer, if anybody's interested, it's called Stay Focused. And I'm not sure if you heard of this one, Michael, but there's several different apps out there or different programs. But Stay Focused is something that you could put on your computer. And it's just an app. And basically, you could say, okay, I want to spend only an hour on this site today. So you can set that for an hour to help break that Facebook addiction <laughs> if you're on it too much. And you could set it. And then it basically bumps you off and you're not able to log back in I until like the next day when yeah. you regain more time, which sometimes drives me crazy. And then I'll go to a different browser. But... <laughs> <laughs> but you can do it. And it is something that works in Chrome. So it's like, oh, I just really want to get it. Or even if you want to set a company computer to where there's only like an hour of Facebook time allowed, whatever, you could totally use this tool. So there's some really good tools to help us be more productive. But, you know, I think, you know, just like you discovered this, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to implement it to a T, but you do want to take what really resonates with you to get you back in control of your time. Because if you're not in control of your time, you know, everything that you do becomes just in alignment with other people's agendas, right? You check your email. Now you're just responding to everybody else. It's what everybody else wants from you. So we really want to change that dynamic and put you back in the driver's seat, just like with your vision. You want to get back into the driver's seat so that you are in charge of your productivity. You are in charge of what actually gets accomplished throughout the day. And, uh, you know, that can look all different ways. And, you know, when I was first studying uh, time management and the planner, it was like, figure out what you're doing every hour of the day and schedule it in. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like way too creative mind to like put down what I'm going to be doing every hour. So for me, it became more about time blocking and really looking at my Google Calendar and setting up for myself and my team, like when I do coaching calls, when I follow up on emails, when I do different things so that they know what to expect from me. 
And am I 100% good with it? You know, not 100%, maybe 80%, but I time block and I schedule things out. And this way my team actually controls my calendar to a certain degree also, which I think is very powerful for anybody who's listening is that get yourself on a digital calendar even if you use a paper one, I use a paper one for goals and I've got um, some really cool tools that I use, but get yourself on a digital calendar and let your top person have access to it so they could schedule things out for you, whether it's conversations with people in the community, whether it's your video recording time, whether it's your Facebook writing tips times, your tour times, whatever it might be, but you could time block it and then your team knows, oh, during these times I can schedule this. And that's really how I look at calendar is in blocks of time. And I am also integrating the free day where it's like you just take a day off. And you know what I love about free days, Michael? I'm not sure if you love this too, but I love that when I am away from my phone, even if it's for an hour or two hours or a day, I love seeing people who have tried to contact me about different things, whether it's t-shirt orders coming through, whether it's um, somebody who wants me to speak or consult or this or that. And it's like, woo, okay, you step away for a little bit and um, things happen. But when you're there watching the phone, waiting for enrollments, waiting for tours, and you're like, okay, come on, somebody, come on, somebody, it's like it doesn't happen. But as soon as you step away, it's like that's when the energy shifts and it's like, oh, wait, now everybody wants me that I've stepped away and that's pretty cool. But acknowledge it and know that when you step away, that's a lot of times when the, the, the flowers start to blossom from all the seeds that you've planted. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I like that app that you mentioned. I was looking it up as we were talking. So I definitely oh, okay. <laughs> keep us off, uh, did you find off it? Facebook. I did. Yeah. Keep yeah. Me off Facebook. And so you're not on there and just, uh, cause I think a lot of people just default. They default to, oh, I'm just going to look at this just for a minute. And yeah, and we're all on Facebook right now, you know. But the trick, the thing is, you know, I don't know. Sometimes when I'm on Facebook, I'm like, okay, how did six hours just go by, really? And granted, I'm doing other work in the meantime. But then when your focus is constantly shifting, it really takes away from your productivity. Oh, definitely. And if you're watching this and you can relate, give us an amen in the comments. <laughs> I like it. Because we all we all get caught in this. So now the trick is, well, how do we start changing it to where we don't get sucked into these things? And, you know, the interesting thing, one of the interesting things that I study with productivity is that it's not necessarily the time that it takes us to do a task that is so consuming. It's the time that it takes for us to get our minds focused. And I know, Michael, you've written some books and I've got ebooks and I've got my uh, best-selling childcare business success book, but it's so true. It was just the focus time. And anytime you get interrupted either by yourself where you're like, oh, I'm just going to watch this video for a little bit, or somebody else comes into your space and interrupts you. Uh, it's like, all right, I need like now 10 minutes of refocusing time to get back into this task. And sometimes we could pump ourselves up for like an hour saying, okay, I'm going to get ready to do this thing. I'm going to sit down and do this thing. And then somebody or something comes along and it's like, oh, wait a second. I, I guess I'm not doing that thing right now. Then the next time you go to do it, it's like, okay, now I need to refocus 10 minutes, 30 minutes, refocusing time. And then I get into it. So it's not even that the tasks that are so critically important to do take us a long time. Typically they don't. It's the focusing time that really takes a long time for us to, uh, to go through, to get ourselves to that point where we just focus in on this thing that needs to get done. Love it. Uh, so I kind of going off of what you just shared, uh, mm -hmm. one of my kind of earlier mentors slash coaches uh, is a guy named Dave Crenshaw. Okay. And there's a couple of people that are kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? That, that kind of talk a, a similar, similar game and, as you were just saying, the, the word that uh, Dave used was switch tasking. Oh, uh, he, yeah. wrote, he wrote one of the books called The Myth of Multitasking. Yes. Um, so oh basically just so simply saying that people cannot productively multitask, plain and simple. Like there's all these people, and my wife just told it to me yesterday. She's like, no, I, women are really good at multitasking or I can multitask. And I just nodded my head. Okay. <laughs> and kind of walked out the door. But um, it's true. It's just, so true. Yeah. It, so the thing that I, I, so I shared the one earlier about um, the three different kind of time blocks. The other thing that I, I think could be really helpful for everyone listening is this whole notion of something called gathering points. 
So this is uh, something that I learned from Dave Crenshaw was basically to do an audit of all of the places that you have data or stuff. So I'm like, oh, I, I have like three when I, I told him. He's like, no, no, no. So we started going through a list. And he's like, literally, um, physically, we were on webcam, but it's like, all right, open that drawer of your desk. What do you mean? Um, and there's all these papers. He's like, what are those, receipts? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, all right, well, there's there's one. How many email addresses do you have? And I, I have way too many emails that I use for different businesses. I had like 10 emails at the time. Okay, so now we're up to 10. And then you, you've got stuff in each of those drawers. Okay, uh, what about your car? Do you have any receipts there? Um, okay, your cell phone, text messages, Evernote, other physical yeah. paper, like uh, filing kits. So you started to go through and I started to realize that if you have to go to multiple places and not multiple, not as in one or two, but multiple as in 10, 15, 20, 25 places. Like I yeah. had uh, multiple places I was going to retrieve voicemails. I was using Google Voice. I had my cell phone. I had Ring Central. It's like, so you're literally having to go and check all of these different email addresses once a day. You're having to go and check all these places for voicemail. You're, you've got some receipts in your car. You've got some in each of those different drawers. You've got another, and it's not that he was trying to show that my office was chaotic because it wasn't messy, but his whole thing is that everything has a home place that it should be in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the corny phrase that he said was, um, everything has a home, no visitors allowed. <laughs> I so love like, it. like that one, you could still obviously have drawers in your desk, but what is what should be in that drawer? Not receipts. It should maybe be your pens and your wallet or your mm -hmm. so, simple example. Um, and then you should obviously have stuff for all your filing cabinets. And I said, what do I do with all the random stuff in uh, my car or in my pockets? And then we saw, we kind of got like one of those, not a man purse, but like one of those like, I don't know, le leather uh, right. portfolios or something that he's like, okay, you need to carry this around. Um, so, but I would, instead of going and then just throwing the receipt in the glove box or in the middle console or on the floor, you put it in this particular portfolio and then you would have a system for moving stuff. And it, it sounds like a lot of work, but really when you started to do it and execute it, it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it really just went down to the play, to the point where I didn't have to go and search 10, 15, 20 different places to find something. Because what I was realizing was that everything that, that I, I needed quickly, I could never find. I couldn't find it in my Google Drive because things really weren't organized well. And I, if I needed a piece of paper to find something, where's this receipt so that I can go and return something? I couldn't quickly find yeah. it. So what we did was, I think we, when all of a sudden and done, when I did the audit, I think I had like 40 or 50 gathering points. Um, and I think we got it down to like seven or eight so that all of my emails are forwarding to one place and all my voicemails would go to my email. So instead of me having to log on to a tool, you're just listening to your voicemail. So you're trying to limit those gathering places. Yeah, I love it. But you're not having to waste time finding stuff. That it that that is so powerful. And you know, <laughs> um, I grew up in a, in a home that was incredibly cluttered. So I love to live my life like more simplistic night right now. But as you're talking, there are so many different gathering places. And, and right when you started talking, I'm like, okay, the kitchen drawer, there's a kitchen drawer, there's this, there's that. And there's all these different places. So I really try to have a routine for where I put things, whether it's my lip balm or my whatever it might be. So I'm like, okay, I know, I know where that is. Um, are there still messy corners? There are. Um, but it's, it's, it, when you have clutter in front of you, there's clutter in your mind. And if I walk into my office, I purposely have an office that's pretty bare and minimalistic because this is my creative space. This is where I draw out mind maps. I put mind maps up on my wall, or some of you might know it as webbing. And I do that. And um, as you were talking, what was it a song? What was it that says everything must have a place and there must be a place for everything? What was that? Keeps popping to my mind. Was it a song? <laughs> I, I just <laughs> it. also brings me back to um, Julia Childs. 
And I don't know, for those of you who have followed her or read her biography, I remember uh, reading her biography and she said to stay organized in the kitchen, her husband drew outlines of all of her cooking tools on the wall and then mounted them in different places on our kitchen wall. So that when she walked in, she knew where her spatula was or this was, and she said everything had its place. And to make sure of it, they drew outlines on the wall to know where everything went. And to me, it's like, if something doesn't have a place, I feel a little like, oh, where, where, where am I gonna put this? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. What do you, uh, kind of going along with what we've been talking about, what, but what do you do to, I guess, unload your brain, clear your brain? Do you have any routines that before you kind of end your day that you, I mean, there's obviously a lot of people that say, I mean, plan your day ahead of time. And, and I'm sure all of us have kind of heard that before. But yeah. uh, are there some particular actions or things that you like to do? I mean, I've read a lot of people like to meditate at the end of their day to really kind of clear their mind and kind of separate work before they then kind of move into the home yeah. space or world. But what do you like to do there to kind of clear your head? Oh, I would love the question. You know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of meditator. I'm a, a meditation. I'm a huge fan of visualization as well. So I love, love, love to spend that time inside of myself where I'm meditating, where I'm visualizing. But I think that some people, and for me, it was really hard to get to that place. And the biggest thing that I found that you have to do is you have to shift everything that's inside of your head. And where can you shift it to? Well, you could call somebody and you could unload all of your crap onto them if you want to, or you could simply take out a piece of paper and you could do what I call a brain dump. And you just take everything that you're thinking about, every single thought, no judgment, nothing. And you just write it all down, whether you're thinking negative thoughts about staff, whether you're thinking positive thoughts about staff, whether you're thinking about our world, our economy, COVID, whatever it is, everything that you've got to do to be compliant, taking temperatures, your new steam cleaner, whatever it is, you just write it all down on a piece of paper. And that to me is the first step because then you feel like this huge mental shift. So it goes from your mind onto a piece of paper. And I love having mind maps on my office. I often show them in my videos, but I've got, you know, I'm surrounded by a whiteboard and mind maps and flip charts because I love taking what's going on inside of my head. And I, I promise you, there's always so much going on. My boyfriend's like, I never want to be inside your head <laughs> because there's a lot of stuff just, just churning all the time. And I think this is true for entrepreneurs, but you know, look at the list and then you could always go, oh, isn't that interesting? There's the list. But it does take a few minutes of discipline to do this. And a lot of us get caught up in the situations that we're in and we don't take time to do a brain dump. But I really recommend if there's any gift that you can give to yourself right now, take a few minutes, especially when we wrap up the show and just do a brain dump, everything personally, professionally onto a sheet of paper. I love doing it on post-it paper because then you can look at your brain and you don't have to be like, oh, it was put away somewhere, but you can look at it on the piece of paper and then you could decide from there what action you take. So from doing a dump, then I categorize it into what you might be call like a mind map or a webbing where I'll, I'll categorize things in circles and then make branches out from those circles of things that I need to tackle. And we do this with teams too. When I go on site and work with leadership teams, we'll often do a leadership brain dump and then categorize it into a web so that everybody has clear actionable items on how they're going to contribute to the main goals that we want to have happen in our centers. So it's a very powerful process to go through. So dump your brain, start there. If there's nothing else you do, because I don't think you get to really effectively calendaring or effectively scheduling your time or delegating things unless you look at everything right in front of you in terms of what your day really looks like and not ideally what you would like it to look like. That's another piece of the puzzle, but what does it really look like? What do you get sucked into? Where do you spend your time? Love it. No, that, that's a great tip and something that I've done a couple of times in the past, but probably not nearly as much as I should. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of um, kind of PDF documents or checklists that can kind of trigger your brain that I would, and I will find one and post one up. Uh, like it goes through like personal uh, and it just has a bunch of trigger words like warranties, uh, home repairs, budgeting, and just to kind of trigger your mind of Things that stress me out. Yeah, exactly. People Things that you, stress me out. Yeah, and, and you just <laughs> write it down there. Yeah. Uh, and then there's obviously the business section, and it'll go through different areas like marketing, operations, hiring, systems, mm -hmm. different things like that. And you're just writing to at least get all of that stuff because that 
for me, it, it is what's always kind of clogging my brain. It's like, we should do this, we should do this, we should do this. But realizing that once you get it out of your brain, that it, at least it goes somewhere. So for me, yeah. I put everything in Evernote okay, and have different kind of categories and things like that. And I label them perhaps. So that's kind of my, my favorite category is perhaps. Gotcha. So perhaps like if I was just doing this live and I looked at the marketing section and I would, okay, great. And then it lists out a couple things. So I would say, perhaps I should write a book on X, Y, Z topic. Perhaps I should do a voice bra and you just, listing those out, then it doesn't mean that you're having to take action on those right away, but rather you're at least getting it out of your head so that it's on paper or stored kind of in the cloud so that you're not having to, oh, I, did I write that down? Because yeah. that usually is one of the big fears of entrepreneurs is this whole fear of missing out or fear of forgetting something that um, kind of continues to clog your brain. So that definitely yeah. a, a brain dump is a wonderful gift uh, to help you kind of free up some of that mental capacity for sure. Yeah, and I, and I think that there, there's nothing so powerful as putting pen to paper. And there's so many different project management systems that you can use. And I think we've mentioned some uh, on, on this program previously, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions because we do use one and I do love them. But to me, there's still nothing so powerful as putting pen to paper and just getting it out. And when you could see it and put it up to where you could see it, it's like, oh, there it is. I don't have to think about it. There it is. All right. Yep. I need new shoes. Okay, it's on the list. You don't have to think about it. All I'm going to do is schedule it in or make it happen. And, you know, I don't know about you, but even just the act of writing things down prompts my body, my mind into action. So I could do planning at the start of the week or even at the start of the month or the start of the day, whatever, not even look at the planner. And it's just like, I just go to work to do those things. And I'm like, oh, okay, because they're top of the mind. I wrote them down. I remember them. And oh, they're getting done. And then I could go back and look at my planner and go, okay, that's cool. Those things were knocked out. Yeah, and I, I think as as you're talking, what I, I think would be important for people to realize and understand is that everyone has a different style. So some people that maybe aren't as creative as yourself or myself or have that that gene or that brain, so to speak, they want things more structured to where yeah. they need every five minutes planned out. And if they don't have that planned out, it's like chaos all around them. Uh, but then there's some people that like yourself and myself that I think we do better in chunks yeah. and knowing here's kind of a list of 10 things that we've put down and our minds just kind of get to work when we know we have that focus time. And I personally get most excited when I look at my calendar and I know that I have those time blocks of focus time where I don't have meetings. I don't have things that have to get done that second yeah but i can just okay great so you've got a, a focused block and uh, if you're able to do these brain dumps you're going to know as you're doing them and what are some of the things that should kind of naturally go to the top what are some yeah. of the things that you know that you need to get done and, and i know i've mentioned this book once or twice on, on these episodes and show but the book the one thing was really really a great book to basically yeah. just allow you to nail down what what is that one thing that you know is the thing that it's like your superpower your your highest gift that you can can focus on that really is going to propel your center to the next level so for a lot of the people listening that superpower might be attracting wonderful talent mm -hmm. and you might know that you're you don't want to be front and center but you want your team to shine and to love coming to work and to be compelled by the vision that you're you're setting. So for a lot of entrepreneurs, that often is one of the, at least for me, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing the most. And I spend a lot of my time on just recruiting really great talent by drawing them in with my vision and painting that picture of here's how I want things to look at during the rest of this year. Even though things are chaotic all around us, I want you to know that you're going to be taken care of and we're going to bury your heads and do some amazing work because now it's it's the time to really roll up our sleeves. So yeah. I would encourage you as you're doing this brain dump to not have to worry that A, you've got to do all those things that are on there. It's more of the exercise of getting it out of your head 
Yes. And B, from there, it's then you're going to start to prioritize. And again, if you're a person that has to see it visually, then you may have to, I mean, look at it and move things and star things. And everyone, again, has a different style of how they like to, to learn and execute. But it, it naturally, the cream typically rises to the top, and then you'll be able to really focus on those things that are the most important. And that's where you, your time is going to be really well spent, and it's going to give you more energy. You're going to not have as many of those days where you're lying in bed not wanting to come to the center. Yeah. If you're knowing that you're you're doing things that matter. And again, we're always going to have to do some of those things that we don't love doing. But if you're doing more and more of the stuff that you really love that bring you joy each and every day, your productivity is going to naturally improve, plain and simple, without even yeah. executing anything that we just talked about, just by focusing on the things that bring you joy and being able to have some of those time blocks, uh, it'll definitely help and improve your productivity. I, I love what you're saying. And I love also, yeah, that we have to acknowledge that people have different ways that they like to bring dump or like to schedule. And, and, and there's not one, one thing that fits all or one size that fits all, so to speak. But what I do find that's really interesting is that I find that a lot of our owners, um, a lot of our entrepreneur, business owners, childcare owners, they love the webbing. They love mind mapping. But our directors, when we're doing workshops and programs, love list. They like to make the list. They like to check off the list. And there's a little bit of a mix. I'm not saying this is for everybody, but I've been finding the majority of people, owners like to mind map, like to web, and directors like to list. So if you're tuning in to us and you're relating to some of this, are you a list person? Are you a web person? And I'm just going to see if I had a little whiteboard in here, just in case. Have you have you done a lot of webbing, Michael? Uh, yes and no. Um, I don't think I've done it in the way that you're describing. Um, I tend yeah. to I tend to do more lists in Google Sheets, and then kind of yeah. categorize, but. Where's my marker? Where's that junk chore? <laughs> Where is it? I just wanted to show everybody. I have a little white whiteboard here. But if you're if you haven't webbed, let's go see if I have a little marker here. It doesn't look like I do. Um, next time. But I'll show you this. And basically, like webbing, we just start with like a series of circles, and you could put in different topics into these circles. And then what you do is you just draw lines. This is a permanent marker, so I can't use it on this. But you'll draw lines, and then you just extend the webs out. So one might be staff. Let's see, how do I get this in here? Staff, can't do it for it. All right, so let's say this one's staff. Then you would just branch out everything that you feel is like related to staff that's on your mind. Let's say that the, another circle is COVID. You put down COVID in the center circle and then you would branch out everything related to COVID that's going on in your mind. Policies and procedures or parents, relationships, filling enrollment. So those could all be separate circles. And then you just start webbing those things out. So you create branches with additional circles. And this is where I like what Michael was talking about with triggers. I think you call them triggers, right? The things yep, that yep. you. So each trigger could be in a separate circle. Your main triggers, the main things that you think about, right? Because 90, what is it? 90, 95% uh, of the thoughts that we think every single day are repetitive thoughts. So we're thinking the same thing over and over and over and over again. So this really helps you to start changing that so that you can draw a circle, you put your trigger in there, and then you branch it out, and then you put more things that come to your mind into your web. So this is what webbing or mind mapping, this is the starting point of it. Um, and I've got several on huge post-it papers around my office just so that I can look at them. And some of them I never take action on, but you know what? It's there. I don't have to think about it. My brilliance is captured, <laughs> right? Because you might have brilliant ideas when you come out of the shower. So this is a great time just to throw some ideas into your web and go, oh, yeah, that was really good. And I get brilliant ideas at the most inconvenient times ever. I tell you, <laughs> in the shower, working out, on a bike ride, whatever it is. But when, you know, and my like, gosh, why do all these really great, powerful thoughts come now? <laughs> so... No, I think that's that's great. And I think the big thing is to make sure that you're capturing these because often, I mean, we we know what we have to do. Like I, I've, my, my staff has said this to me many times. They're like, Michael, we don't need more ideas. We need to focus on execution. And mm -hmm. I'm always going to have ideas. So that's never yeah. going to get shut down. But what I realized is that as long as for me, as long as I had a system to capture them so that I wasn't just 
having those thoughts constantly because those are the things that end up throwing you off where mm. you might only have to focus on one or two things. And I mean, most of the centers, in my opinion, right now should be focusing on staff morale, uh, making sure that your vision for the rest of this year and beyond it is dialed in and enrollments. You've got to, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure that you've got enough cash to sustain your operations. And uh, you're going to have a lot of other thoughts and you're going to have a lot of other ideas and, I was speaking to a center yesterday that they said they've they've never done a summer camp, and they said, "Well, should we do a, a summer camp?" And a, it, I mean, it's, it's kind of late in the game. I mean, it, it's already June, but uh, <laughs> I said, "Well, tell me about what you would need to get done in order to make that happen." Well, we'd have to hire different staff because the way our staff is on contracts, they have the summers off and we have to go get these other licenses and get recategorized. And well, how long do you think that's going to take? Well, probably a month or two. And so, well, I think the summer is going to be over. And <laughs> how, how is your enrollment sure. looking for August, September? And well, enrollments are not where they need to be. Well, that is where you need to focus. But, and it's not that they were wrong by any means. It just means that there's always going to be thoughts and ideas and your brain tends to go to survival mode of you know, what do you have to do to continue to kind of get you out of the situation and get you out of all the stuff that's yeah. going on. Um, it's true. You want to make sure that you're working on those things that, that are really going to give you that impact now. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think sometimes in, you know, when there's crisis and when we're like, Oh, summer camp, you know, it can create a sense of urgency so that what we create can become really powerful too. I've seen that happen where it's like, yeah, it's kind of late to hire or to do this or to do that. But man, when you've got that right sense of urgency behind the goal that you want to achieve, that's powerful. That's powerful. And that's what's missing in a lot of our programs and in a lot of our lives is that we don't have that sense of urgency to where we take action on these compelling goals. Um, so, you know, that that's a missing piece of it. But what was I going to say? I was going to add something there that you were talking about, but I forgot. It slipped my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that's what I was going to say. That, I, I found it. <laughs> it came back. <laughs> um, is, you know, that's the beauty of project management systems. So let's say, Michael, you have the client who's talking to you about like, oh, yeah, I should really be doing this. I write down those ideas because if you're not going to implement it this year, man, schedule it out in a project management system with some due dates for yourself so that you can accurately and really effectively uh, implement it and roll it all out next year. And that's one of the reasons I love project management systems is because you could just list out the steps, set it up as a recurring task for yourself for next year even or next month, whatever it might be. And whew, you could be ready to roll or even delegate all those things out. Love it. Yeah. So we've thrown quite a few ideas. I mean, I'd love to spend a few minutes maybe summarizing or giving a couple of actions for, for our listeners, because I know we've kind of bounced uh, with all great stuff, but we, we both have shared some really good ideas. So if we kind of unpack this to look at what are some of the wins that you can move forward with? What are some of the things that you can move forward with this week? Uh, from your side, what would be the the one or two things that you would suggest e even today? Um, I mean, we're all about action action takers as opposed yeah. to just listening. Um, what would you like to see our, our listeners and these owners and directors and leaders at these centers move forward? Yeah, you know, and this is this is powerful. And if you have anything and you're tuning into the show, please list it in the comments. We're going to make sure that you get. We're going to do a raffle for a nice prize uh, from our Always Essential line. So we really be interested in hearing what you have to say too. Uh, my action items, number one would be to brain dump. I think that is like, that is the starting point of everything. I think it, it will really set everything else into motion because if you're feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, it's really hard to do anything else. So to me, it would be number one to do a brain dump. And then number two is to look at your blocks of time. And I know Michael called it something different, but really look at those blocks of time and get the big rocks in. So when is it going to be that you're going to be having conversations with people in the community? When is it that you're going to be having one-on-ones with your staff? Get the things that are really critical. Just get those time blocked. My, my coaching is time blocked. And I have to have, add a third in that we didn't talk about. Is that okay? <laughs> of course. So this is really important. And this is where I see the struggle um, is interruptions. Make sure that you set aside time for yourself that is your do not interrupt time. Uh, 
I don't think I don't think I have one in front of me, but we actually have little um, things to hang on your door made that say, you know, it's like open door time and then it's closed door time. So let your staff know that there's going to be closed door time where you're not letting anyone interrupt you so that you can have your focus time to knock out these important goals. So make sure you have your do not interrupt time and put that on your calendar. So, you know, set aside, it's going to be one to three every day. This is my do not interrupt time unless the fire or unless the building is burning down, whatever it might be. But this is my time to really focus and knock these things out. And that in itself will totally boost your productivity. I like that. Yeah, that it goes back to the whole, uh, maybe I didn't mention it. So that, that's a good <laughs> point that you brought it up. Um, yeah. It's the, the word that Dave used. Uh, Switch tasking, switching switch costs. Tasking. There you go. Yep. So I think he said that it takes like 5, 10 to 15 minutes to get back to what you were focused on once you have those little, he said like the the quick questions were kind of the, were and are the death of a lot of productivity in different organizations where someone's, the manager's got their door open and then, and I'm sure this happens with your team all the time. They kind of knock on your door. Hey there, I have a quick question. And meanwhile, you were in the middle of doing payroll. So you stop, you take the question, which is maybe about, I don't know, something completely different. Where's the toilet gonna, paper? Yeah, exactly. Then it's going to take <laughs> um, 10 to 15 minutes for you to get right? back into yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you were doing. And right. you just lost that 10 to 15 minutes to kind of get back in those quick questions. Those interruptions happen all the time. I mean, that's so we used uh, teamwork chat, which is very similar to Slack, and there's a lot of other tools. But my favorite thing on the tool is the do not disturb. Mm -hmm. So I've encouraged our team to put those on there because otherwise they're hearing that ding, ding, similar to like a text message all day long. So they could be in the middle of writing content for a new website or coding the website or taking a Facebook ad live or whatever it is. And then if I'm pinging them or someone else is pinging them and then they're stopping, that's when all of our issues end up occurring. Yeah. So um, now that that was a that was a great point. Yeah, I love so, that so. one. Love that one. Uh, I think my my couple would be first. I, I would highly encourage you to read the book, The One Thing, because I, my concern is that a lot of these childcare center owners they're they're working on twenty million different things at the same time, and I know that's the nature of the beast. So I'm not saying that I can help make all of some of the admin things go away, but what I'm encouraging you to look at is what are the things that really bring you energy? Like, mm -hmm. what do you like just absolutely love doing? Again, is it the hiring piece? Is it, uh, we had one of the center owners, I, when I always ask, well, who's doing your tours? Tell me about your tours so we can kind of give feedback. And they will say, well, I used to give tours and I love doing them, but I figured my director would be upset if I were doing the tours. I'm like, so you're telling me that's your favorite thing to do and you delegated it to someone else. And it, it just is starting to learn some of those things that are going to be among the best use of your time. But also the things, again, that just bring you joy. Because if you're constantly, how can I phrase this the right way? If you're constantly just doing the things that you don't enjoy, the things that if you're constantly looking for the fire drills that you have to do and the problems and things like that. Not only is it the whole law of attraction piece where you're continuing to attract those negative things, but then it's kind of a, a double-edged sword because you're not being able to work on those things that you really love. So that would be my first one. Awesome. Uh, the second one really is this whole notion of free days, focus days, and buffer days, and knowing what day you're going to have before you show up. And then also knowing or letting your team know rather that that's what the day is. So when my team knows that I have a focus day, I don't want to be getting messages on teamwork chat and I don't want to be ha getting text messages from them and being asked for things because that then it turns into a buffer day. So I could be in the zone doing content for a new webinar, working on my book, whatever it is. Mm. And that literally for me, that, that just kills my momentum. If I'm going from and being in the zone of something, and then, okay, great. So I've got, let's say it's a two hour block. I'm going to take a break, grab some coffee, get back to it. Well, and if I, in between or on that break, I start checking emails. Now it's a buffer day. And now my mind is completely different because now it's looking at all the things in my inbox. Mm -hmm. And then I will still try and get back to what I was supposed to do for the afternoon. But I can tell you that my slot earlier in the day then would be much better or was yeah. much better. 
after because I wasn't thinking about anything else. I was just zoned in. And I love your idea of the app. Uh, mm -hmm. I use another app. Let me see what it's called. Um, I think it's called Focus at Will. Oh, nice. So that that one, yeah, so that is a, it's one of those that plays music uh, at like a high vibration level. So it's similar oh, to that. Dot .fm, I think. So I think I own both those now. <laughs> uh, I actually can't listen to music. I, I I need to have like either complete silence mm -hmm. or something that doesn't have any words or I can't focus. Yeah. Um, so these apps have been I kind of put my Bose surround uh, headphones on, turn the music on and just go. Yeah. Um, so those would be my two to look at what is that one thing that uh, you enjoy doing the most and it's your true brilliance that no one else can do. That's the other piece of it that it's something that is really unique to you, your unique ability, your your genius, your superpower, whatever you'd like to call it. And then the second thing was planning out your schedule and your week so that you know, okay, great. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're going to be buffer days. Tuesday, Thursday, they're going to be focus days. So I'm going to focus on the most important things that are going to help grow and improve my center. And then maybe just Saturday, Sunday are your free days. But again, the reminder on those free days, you cannot be checking email. You can't be texting your team. You can't be reading the business section of the paper and then writing down 10 ideas because mm -hmm. that, then that is a buffer day because you're, mm -hmm. you're not letting your mind rest. And he had all of the data and things like that to show. Cause I, I questioned it at first. <laughs> but everyone, like, this, I'm like, ah, what does this guy know? But he's trained tens of thousands of entrepreneurs and they've tested it to prove that that works. So that's awesome. I think those are two fantastic things. So I hope everybody got something from today's show. Um, yeah. And remember to, to leave us a comment, to like, to share. And uh, we're going to be here every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Love it. So where can, uh, I know we'd like to end with at least, uh, we'll end with a quote, but also I like to tell people where they can kind of learn more. So um, mm -hmm. I know that, that you've got a couple of fun things that you're up to. I've got a couple of fun things that I'm up to. So uh, how can our listeners go and, and learn more about uh, Julie Barkas and all the fun things? I encourage you to come on over. Uh, we got a, actually a childcare business success group. Some of you may actually be tuning in from that group page, uh, but come and join us at our childcare business success group here on Facebook. You can also find me at childcare businesssuccess.com and on childcare business success there's a free master class as well as several other videos that you could tune into and learn more you know bring your pen bring some paper because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there that you can learn and that you can implement immediately especially my uh, drive method master class where I share with you the drive method for really accelerating your childcare business success and helping your life become absolutely dreamy so that's where they could I go for me it. how about you uh, so our main main website address is localchildcaremarketing.com. Again, we are a digital agency that helps drive revenue for child care centers. So uh, local child care marketing, there are some free books. There's a book called uh, Enrollments on Demand, 100 Leads in 100 Days. Uh, there's some webinars. So lots of great content all focused on uh, revenue generation for your center. Yeah. Um, so we'd, I'd love to well, end with... And with a quote. Okay. Um, do you want to pull one from your book or do, would you like me to find uh, a quote? Here? Well, I can give you, I know this one's not in my book, uh, the Childcare Business Success book, but I will give you one. I don't know who said it, but I think it's powerful. And then if you want to share a different one, you could always share another one. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we'll do two today. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So this one, it's something that has just always stuck in my mind. And I think it's really important when we think about performance and productivity. But uh, for every minute you spend planning, you say four to 10 times that amount in execution. So do the math. And even if you take 10 minutes to plan, you're going to save a boatload of time. And I don't know who said that or who taught it to me, but it's something that really stands out in my mind is very powerful. For every minute you spend planning, you're going to save four to 10 times that amount in execution. That's a, a great quote. And I'll, I'll give a 30 second aside uh, on that. So I, I mentioned last week and I'm finishing up my master's thesis and the topic is on small business failure and a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So uh, the I looked at and I analyzed, so I did two things. Number one, I looked at all of the research of why do small businesses fail? So what are all the different reasons? And I listed out the top five reasons. And then I also interviewed 120 entrepreneurs across the US of different industries and looked at why they failed or why they felt, keyword felt that they failed. Right. And one of the, in the literature, uh, the 
second or third top reason for small business failure was lack of planning. Mm. Um, and and it, it was just clear as day. But what was interesting was that when I did the interviews with the entrepreneurs, not one of them mentioned that being the reason that they <laughs> failed. Interesting. I started, so I started reflecting and as we were having these conversations, most of them were a half hour. Some of them lasted, I think my longest was two and a half hours. They, they started kind of reflecting. And because as we were going through the journey of their, some of these are, are really tough journeys of I mean, losing everything for some of these people. But as we were reflecting, almost all of them by the end of the interview, and I wasn't leading them this way, they started realizing all the things that they should have done differently. Well, I should have had a plan before I actually started the, the business. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't have just decided to start a child care center. I probably should have like had a plan. Uh, At least so. a plan written down on, on a napkin like many of them. <laughs> So no, that, that was a great one. Um, my quote is a, a real short one from Walt Disney, huge Walt Disney fan. Uh, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Ooh, so take some that. action from everything that we shared for yeah. all of you today. Uh, make sure you check out Julie's website. Check out my site. If we can be of any help to you, we are here at your service. Uh, but make sure you tune back in later this week, 9 o'clock Central on Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern. Sounds good. And I just want to say in closing, if I may, Please. It, it is that I know that, you know, a lot of our, our hearts are hurting right now for many reasons. And I just want to say, let the, you know, let the love that you want to see in the world be reflected and shine through you. And I think that's the most powerful thing that you can do. So I'm thinking about everybody. And um, I think that's it. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, everyone. See you, Thanks. See you Thursday. Bye, everyone.